Jones Productions is a queer-owned Queensland business specialising in the production and promotion of drag entertainment for a variety of modern audiences. They embrace diversity and aim to bring drag performance into new and exciting venues and stages across Queensland. Key productions include Queer and Here, an event produced in partnership with Education Queensland for LGBTQI plus students and allies aged 12 to 17, and Diamond Showcases, promoting the best in Queensland drag and burlesque talent. Welcome back to the Burlesque Bulletin podcast. I'm your host, Honey Holloway, and today we are here with Hayden Jones from Jones Productions. Hello, Hayden. How are you? Fabulous. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. You're looking fabulous in your all black ensemble today. Thank you. Just, you know, have to wear it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. You look good. Um, so, first question that I like to ask all my guests is if they know their zodiac sign and potentially their moon and rising signs. I'm a Taurus. Okay, yes. yes. It was your birthday the other day. Yes, I turned it? 30. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. I literally turned 30 on the 26th of April and I'm also a Taurus, so... 16th of May, Taurus yeah. sisters. Oh. <laughs> um, and Moon Snow. You don't know? That's okay, right, I'll figure it out for you after this, I reckon. Um, but tell us how you got into um, Jones Productions and just tell us a bit about yourself and how you grew up and how you got to where you are today. Well, um, when COVID hit, I was doing a corporate mining job mm -hmm. and I was just like flying and like, no. And then I stumbled into a venue that had weekly drag shows and I fell in love. Yep. And then when we hired a, um, Freddie and Holly from old events, they, mm -hmm. they came on board and started booking burlesque acts as well. And I fell in love with burlesque, fell in love with drag. And then we started Spirit and Jones together, mm -hmm. did, doing doing events. And then about June, two years ago, I left that and started Jones Productions. Amazing, amazing. Um, so how would you describe yourself in five words? Okay, I'll break it down to five. <laughs> Fun, exciting. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's tough. I know, it is hard, hey? Cheerleader. I, lo I love okay. to like bring people up. I'm just yep. like, you know, I can be a biggest cheer I can be a biggest cheerleader. Um, oh, two more. Witty. Mm -hmm. I think I'm hilarious. <laughs> and kind. Beautiful. That's some good words. Um, what about Jones Productions? Could you say some words about that? Don't have to do the five. But. Okay, perfect. Because that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jones Productions is. I'm going to use fun again. Mm -hmm. um, it is fresh and exciting. It brings drag and burlesque to a areas of Brisbane where it, do it doesn't have much. Mm -hmm. So it opens people's eyes to new things. Like we've done some acts in like Bayside, which they, they've never seen before. Um, so yeah, it opens people's eyes up to different kinds of entertainment and just joyful. Cause, because that was, you know, drag and bless is joyful. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, so can you explain to the audience um, a bit about Jones Productions? I know you did just then, um, but just elaborate a little bit and let everyone know what it is if they've never heard of it before. So Jones Productions is a production company based here in, in, in Mianjin. And it just um, mainly focuses on kids' events, um, but we also do like monthly drag and burlesque shows all around Brisbane. We also do cocktail making classes. Ooh. We also do uh, bi-monthly tw tw Twisted Trivia, mm -hmm. which we have about four venues doing that now. And we and I also do a uh, bingo with a twist, which is a classic drag queen bingo where, mm -hmm. where, where we throw in some burlesque and sideshow. And I'm about to launch Diamond Brunch, which I'm very excited about, mm -hmm. where, we're, where we're bringing uh, sideshow and burlesque to a typical drag brunch and just having a great time. That's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm very excited, excited for that. <laughs> um, so what's been some of your favourite things about Jones Productions or about your role? My favourite thing has been obviously just 
giving opportunities and, and giving a stage for people to perform mm. um, because obviously it's people's passion, it's how people pay their bills and giving uh, another stage because obviously here in Brisbane there's not many venues and there's not a lot of opportunities for as many artists as we have here. So I would do like a monthly adult show or a bi-monthly adult show to give in a stage to, to people and just seeing the joy on their faces when they perform and it's just, it's just what I love to do. Awesome. And what about maybe some of your least favourite things about the role? There's always some bad things, some not the best things. The balance, like, yeah. you know, like I, like you commit to so many shows and commit to so many things and then just like trying to balance, um, cause I don't do this full time. So try to balance like Hayden life and Jones production life is, is, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And obviously meeting and, and meeting commitments yeah. and keeping the artists happy. Mm -hmm. And what's been a specific highlight out of your time doing Jones productions? I think my highlight would have to be, oh, that's hard. There's been so many. You can, try, you can name a few. Um, my highlight is, was doing my first cocktail making class because okay. it was very exciting to have like drag and burlesque and making cocktails, just very interactive. So fun. And just like imagine just rocking up to a venue and part of the package is you get to make two amazing cocktails, have some canapes and and you know enjoy the time with the drag queen and have a gorgeous blessed performer mm -hmm. throw some fire and just have a great time so i think the highlight is like introducing something different mm -hmm. and something like exciting yeah that definitely is different like having drag and burlesque but then also doing something like mm. cocktail making or whatever like i haven't seen anything like that so that's pretty awesome um so what's been some of your not great moments not great moments. Oh, that's tough. Um, not great moments. A lot of my not great moments do come from the online hate. Oh, okay. Because um, part of Jones Productions is also part of my... It's it's a, it's the kids' events and the and the adult events, mm -hmm. and I try to keep them as separate as possible. Um, but I do get a lot of online hate because of mm -hmm. doing adult content yeah. and also doing content for kids. And as much as I try to separate it and try to you know, and plus drag queens kids isn't very favorable favorable in this mm -hmm. time. And like I'd love to explain that more and do um, Boston burlesque and have that part of like the circus as part of queer in here and stuff like that. Um, but just the online hate is just too hate. Mm. That's and, awful because they the usually, backlash. yeah, they don't know what it actually is or they've never seen a show. They're just seeing what they think from the media or whatever and lumping you in with that, which is unfair. Very unfair. Mm. And the threat and the threats of protesting, like mm. I've even had my adult shows, um, get, get protested all, all on the Bay side. Really? I'm about to do shows in Toowoomba and I've, I've, I've already been threatened to be um, protested there. Oh my God. So there's just a lot of hate around, even though it's nothing to do with children, it's because yeah. it's the same business name. Yeah. Um, That's awful. Um, so what's a, su a surprising lesson that you've had to learn or a challenge that you've had to overcome? And it could be just like within yourself and starting this business or just anything, whatever comes to mind. A challenge is probably trying to keep everyone happy because mm. obviously um, there's only a certain amount of slots in every show. So a massive learning curve with me was trying to book certain acts I like and performers, um, the spot numbers I like to make a well-balanced show. And sometimes some performers and some acts don't meet the show's criteria and don't meet the vision of that show. Mm -hmm. And it, it's d disappointing that you can't give everyone a, a, a gig basically. Yeah. So I've had to really learn to obviously balance keeping people happy mm -hmm. and, and understand that you, you can't give every opportunity to everyone yeah and you should be celebrated for doing the, the, the event and giving those certain people that show mm -hmm. and then in the future offer that opportunity to, to someone else yeah. and and not obviously let people's um, um unhappiness or di or distress about not being bought and not having the same opportunity uh, affect you yeah yeah for sure
So um, when hiring somebody or hiring someone to perform, what are some green flags or good traits um, that you see in them? Um, per professionalism. Mm -hmm. um, I like, you know, if, I, I love picking people not only who are perfect for the show, but I know who will also be great in the green room and, um, and also people who are very active in social media as well, who not only share, share shows at their end, but other people's shows and try to lift up the community as a whole. And it's all about the vibe of the show. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really look for people who, A, I know will do an amazing job, B, who I know will show up in time and will do everything they're required to do for the gig, but people who are also happy to be there mm -hmm. and, and want, the show, want the show to achieve. Mm -hmm. A quick thanks to Cam Atchery for sponsoring the Burlesque Bulletin and for all his hard work behind the scenes filming and editing the podcast. Cam has been involved in the burlesque industry for over 12 years through his photography and videography. If you are a performer looking to get promo photos and video or a producer looking to get your show photographed or filmed, please contact Cam through his website, camattree.photography or find him on Instagram at camattreephotovideo. And now back to the episode. Um, do you have any pet peeves about the industry or the scene or the community? Oh, and that good. could be encompassing everything. So it could be just in events in general, drag, burlesque. Um, pet peeves about just full, like we had a local venue close re recently the zoo and okay. I, I was lucky enough to do a few shows there before it closed. Mm -hmm. So it's people who are upset about a, a, a venue closing, mm. but these people also need to be out there supporting events. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the shows will close, the venues will close if people don't get out there and support them. Yeah. Everyone would ra is going to rally around a certain thing that happens, but those same people also need to buy tickets to mm -hmm. the show, support the shows, yeah. um, show up to, um, to showcases and mm -hmm. support the community on the whole mm -hmm. um, because that's how shows survive. Mm -hmm. So many shows sometimes can't go ahead because of low ticket sales and I know I know Brisbane is quite famous for last minute tickets mm -hmm. but that's what venues look for. That's what producers look for is your, your pre-sales and you might sell heaps on the door but well, what venues want to see is how, what's the pre-sale like? Mm -hmm. what, what's this like? What can we predict for this night? So massive pet peeve is people run, running around like something negative that's happened, like, for example, the zoo closing mm -hmm. down. But these people also need to be, if they want these venues, if they want these shows, people need to go out and support them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like people usually buy tickets at the last minute, but, like, sometimes that's too late and, you know, you haven't got enough tickets or... Um, and you have to like cancel the show. So people like waiting to the last minute, like just, yeah, very frustrating. Very frustrating. Um, so what's something you think people should know about you or about the role? People, oh, great questions, I'm so impressed. <laughs> I'm throwing you the hard ones. Oh, I love it, <laughs> I love it. Um, that I'm very open-minded mm -hmm. in regards to new things, experimental things that I love, not just blessing and drive, I love sideshow, mm -hmm. I love seeing new things. I like going to other people's events, getting inspired, like, you know, a, a, a bombshell review or a femme follies or a cult mm -hmm. or an alt and just seeing what type of things are out there. And, um, and yeah, so I'm very open-minded to not just the classic burlesque and the classic drag, but just, I just want to see a show. Yeah. Like, I just want to be entertained. Be a good show. Yeah, like, just go sure. up there for three minutes. Like, I don't care, you know, people's background, how people identify. All I care about is an amazing show. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's all I want to see, all, all, all I want to see, in, see on that stage. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, who have been some of your inspirations? Oh, good question. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I would actually 
credit a lot of Jones Productions' success to Freddie Winnup and Ollie Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we did an, a company together called Spirit and Jones, mm -hmm. and I learned a lot from a performer's point of view and also from another producer's point of view. And still to this day, we frequently collaborate on ideas, mm -hmm. and I credit a lot of my achievements in the kids' space and also the adult space into just the openness of the collaboration and the willingness to support when needed. And, mm -hmm. you know, I do definitely um, credit a lot of the last four, three, three, three four years to mm -hmm. them. Lovely. Um, so, do you have a pre-show routine or ritual? I don't, but th I should get one though. That's a really good idea. Well, you said you have an espresso martini sometimes. Oh Is yeah, that... for the adult shows. Yes, yes, um, of course. <laughs> for the adult shows, I definitely espresso martini or a dirty mm -hmm. martini, just as like doors open. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that's it. But, but I need something better though. Mm -hmm. Like I need something. Like during like... the day, like what, do you have anything? Or you just get up, have breakfast, have coffee. Are you thinking about the show when you get up in the morning, or are you just like, oh? I know, I, I like to think in my head. I like to think I'm organised enough. I don't have to stress about the show. Yeah. Um, but like, as soon as I get to the venue. Yeah. That's I'm just like, okay. Like, oh no. <laughs> no, no. Let Let's do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of my shows are in in the base side, I'm just like traffic. traffic. Yeah, that would be very stressful. Very trying to like, get okay, there on traffic. time. Um. So yeah. So so mainly a show day is just basically stress about getting to the venue. Mm -hmm. And then have an espresso martini and just getting ready to slay. Yep. Awesome. Responsibly. Yep. <laughs> um, if you could swap lives with anyone for a day, who would it be? So that doesn't have to be within... Oh, no. oh I would love to be with Vi Victoria Beckham, Posh Bias. Okay. Love that. And why Victoria Beckham? Oh, she's an inspiration. She is. Did you love Spice Girls? Oh, you? <laughs> Posh Bias all the way, all black, you know. Oh, yep. Plus, it makes you look skinny, but plus, also, said, what's posh? <laughs> oh, just like, just break it down. Mm -hmm. Great husband, mm -hmm. you know. Did you watch the documentary? Yeah. I haven't watched it yet, but people have told me it's amazing. It, it's amazing. <laughs> and just like, like, I wouldn't want her voice, but like mm. everything else, like, you yep. know. She slays everything. Up. Up. She slays <laughs> everything. Like, businesswoman, yeah. like, oh, and she's so pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Posh spice, definitely. I'm a, I'm a bit more of a, well, when I was younger, I was obsessed with Baby Spice, but then I got older. I I'm, I'm love Ginger, oh, of too. course, like, um, but I love everyone equally. <laughs> oh, no, posh all the way. Like, yeah, yeah. The, 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 like the others are great. Yeah. Like, you know, I respect their, their contributions to the world. Yeah. But like, if someone said you can only meet one Spice girl, I'd be like, okay, posh, why are you? That would be so hard for me to choose. I love Mel C as well, because she's got an amazing voice. And wasn't she just at um, Gay Day? Correct. Yeah. But, but like Posh is at here. Yeah, okay. Rest like... but every, but You're like, I don't care about anyone except Posh. But everyone's had their opinion. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> posh is up here. <laughs> um, so what's a random or surprising fact about you? Oh, that's tough. God, you're making me think I love this. <laughs> I don't actually have one. Really? Not something like completely random. Like I always use mine as an example that I can do this with my fingers. Can you see that? Like it's not anything important. <laughs> <laughs> it's just random. You can't think of anything? I can't think of anything. Nope. I've gone right. blank. That's okay. <laughs> and no one has ever made me go, go blank before because <laughs> I love to talk. So congratulations, well, 30 special. years. First time in speech, just in 30 years. It's probably just because I'm a Taurus. I'm like probably. just uh, <laughs> throwing energy. you off. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so what's some of the best advice that you've received? My best advice I receive is that what, you, what you're doing is important. Mm -hmm. um, and that don't stop because you have a bad show. Mm -hmm. Don't stop because you get, you know, a threatening email. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, because if you, if you can inspire one person, mm -hmm. you've done your job. Definitely. Uh, if you could travel back in time and talk to yourself when you started, what would you say? 
stay away, joking. Um, <laughs> no, just like kill it. Don't yeah. don't second guess your choices because mm-hmm. it's every time you do something you you second guess it, mm-hmm. and don't worry about what other people think so much. I love that. Just just kill it, just slay it. Yeah. Because you, because you can only be held accountable for yourself. Yeah. The way other people think, the way other people act, how other people take what you say, it's, it's on them. Yeah, for sure. So what's some of your biggest strengths? Endurance. Mm-hmm. Endurance, like, you know, to keep going mm-hmm. is, 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 is a lot. Like, mm-hmm. for example, the show doesn't sell very well to still put another one the, 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 the following month. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Just, yeah, just believe in yourself. Because there's, don't worry, there's like 20 people who tell you that you're not good enough mm-hmm. to do something. So it's like, just keep doing it. Yeah. But those people are usually the ones that aren't doing anything. Exactly. <laughs> um, so what's some of uh, your weaknesses or something that you would like to work on? Mm. I think time management. Okay. I think one, one, one of my biggest ways is taking too much on. Yeah. And not giving my all into a certain project because mm-hmm. I have like another 30 things I have to, I have to do. Mm-hmm. So I think time management is like my biggest weakness mm-hmm. and not focusing enough on the important things. Yeah. And self-reflection. Yeah. You're doing pretty well with your self-reflection, I think. I know. It's like this better therapy. <laughs> Cheaper too. Yeah. Um, so what's some goals that you have for Jones Productions in the future? Okay. Um, I, would, I would love to win another Queen's Ball Award. Okay. Um, you have before? I won last oh, year for, congratulations. for Community Group. Oh, yeah. And I have three nominations for this year. Awesome. Um, mainly just, not just for my ego, because <laughs> uh, it'll open more opportunities, because once, um, just to legitimise especially with the kids stuff, just to, le- to, le- to legitimise the event. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm going to hit 600 kids who's been through the program this year. Wow. Um, so, like, another goal would be to reach 1,000 kids by by next year. It's, like, the ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. But in regards to, like, a, like, adult world, I would love to grow brunch into a more, like, a regular theme. Mm-hmm. And I would just love to keep doing what I'm doing, giving opportunities to more performers, uh, nurturing up and coming talent and just having a great time. Awesome. That's some awesome goals. <laughs> so we're going to play a game. I love a game. Are you excited? Because I'm very excited. Okay. Rhinestones or feathers? Feathers of the way. Okay. A boa any day. Like, like really? Rhinestones are great. Yeah. But like, a feather boa can be so much more. Mm-hmm. I feel like most people have said rhinestones. So really? Yeah. But imagine like like a, this campus because like mm-hmm. just, just extra extra. <laughs> oh. Uh, C string or G string? Or G string. Mm. Neo or classic? Okay, classic. Mm-hmm. Boa or feather fans? I do love a feather fan. Mm-hmm. Like I like like a notchously large, like <laughs> yeah. too like you know some, sometimes the this like can't lift them very high. Like that is what I want to see. Like yeah. I want to be in the heavy back, ones. Yeah. heavy on it. See like the face be like. Mm-hmm. like uh, it up. I love yeah. that. <laughs> uh, lace or leather? Oh, leather all the way. Mm-hmm. And and any color too. Like uh-huh. like not just black leather. Oh, really? I love this like yep. a violet leather. Mm-hmm. Um, like a pink. Yeah. yeah, red. Red, I could go yeah, red. Okay. I can go red. Yeah. But like, there's so much more options. Like, mm-hmm. it just, it just, doesn't, just doesn't have to be black leather. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I, I, I want to see more. Um, tassels or assholes? Definitely assholes because they're not as common. Yeah. So like when you see it's a fun it, surprise. it's a fun surprise. Yeah. And like, you know, like says there's a lineup of like, six performers, I'm like, oh, is anyone going to bring out the ass tassels yeah. tonight? And when it happens, just like, yes. Yep. <laughs> diamonds or pearls? Definitely diamonds. Mm-hmm. Drag or burlesque? Oh, that's tough. I started in drag world, mm-hmm. um, but definitely the burlesque, burlesque world has been a lot more n- nurturing. Mm-hmm. And in my personal experience, um, 
a lot more supportive in, in regards to my shows mm -hmm. and that's why I'm a big believer in and so many shows collaborate the two as well so mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're my favorite shows um, where there's like a vanguard or a cult or an old or a fan follies where it's like a mixture of both yeah um but yeah I think I'm leaning as now I'm a little bit older I am definitely lead, leading more towards burlesque mm -hmm. as, as my favorite yeah it's a hard choice. It is a very it's hard the choice. Hardest choice. After, yeah. after all the questions, that's definitely top three. <laughs> uh, stocking peels or stripper heels? Oh, stripper heels. Mm -hmm. Big stage show or intimate bar show? Depends on the context, though. Okay. Depends on the context. Like, I w it depends on the vibe of the show. I know this is a very in-depth question. Um, <laughs> but, like, don't get me wrong, I love going to an amazing venue and seeing a massive production show, mm -hmm. but then there's nothing better than, like, a very stripped down, mm -hmm. you know, six six acts only, intimate, you know. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But... They've I, both got their, like, pros. pros but, but, hey, if there's confetti, fire or bubbles, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, if there's two shows on one night, one's a cute, intimate, you know, one, and the other one's like a big stage show, and I have friends in both of them. Mm -hmm. Whoever has the confetti, smoke and fire, I'm there. So, yeah, okay. Like, I'll, I'll have a show. Um, cabaret or comedy? Cabaret. Mm -hmm. Movies or a TV series? TV series, cause, cause, because movies end in, like, an hour and a half. Yeah. Where TV series can enjoy for, like, at least 12 to 22 episodes. Do you have a favourite? I know that's, like... Difficult okay, or no, something easy, that you're easy, watching. No, hands down, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I was literally hoping that you would say that. Like, <laughs> I'm like, we're the same age. I feel like we're the same. Whether we are the same era, I'm like, please say Buffy, please. Say Buffy. But Buffy was my childhood. Mm -hmm. Like, take or leave Angel. But like, yes, yes, like yes. <laughs> Buffy and like Sarah Michelle Gellar. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my my icon, and like, I'm. Buffy all the way. Yep, okay. I love that. Easy, I just... easy, this is, that was the easiest question of all <laughs> yeah. night. I just started watching Buffy again for like the billionth time, but the first time with my partner. So I'm like, oh, I'm, doing the, I'm doing exactly the same thing. Are you? Exactly. So he's never seen it in his entire yeah. life. Yeah. And we're up to season two. <gasps> we're up I'm, to season three. <laughs> and I'm just, and I'm just like, you have to watch Buffy. And he's yeah. like, okay, I'm into it now. I'm like, don't look away from the screen. Yeah. The best, best best part's happening right now. I, I know season one's a bit rough, but season two, yep. things get better. Season two, <laughs> things get better. Definitely, definitely. Um, are you an early bird or a night owl? Oh, night. I hate, I hate mornings. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I, a little sleep in? I love a sleep in. Uh, like if I need like a ice caramel latte and oat milk and three shots within mm -hmm. like a good 15 minutes of me waking. Yeah. Or I'm just a bitch. Uh, yeah. Like I did not do mornings. Fair. Uh, sweet or savoury? Oh, sweet. And do you have a favourite sweet food? Oh. Sweet treat? I'm a basic bitch. I love white chocolate. <gasps> Me too. Like, mm -hmm. you can... Just like, plain white chocolate? Oh, I, I, I'll happily shake it up. <laughs> but like, just like white chocolate, mm -hmm. just like, or like a white chocolate fountain. Mm, okay. Just like sit there and like dip your strawberries oh, in it, yum. get your mushrooms on it. I'm set. Yeah. Like, I get so people good. like, you know, want a donut or they want a cake. I'm like, no, bitch, I want a like, white chocolate. Mm -hmm. I'm sweet. Delicious. Halloween or Christmas? Halloween, it's gay Christmas. Yeah. Like, Halloween, every year I do drag for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Sorry, every year I do Halloween. <laughs> Sorry, I said again, every year I do drag for Halloween. Yeah. I've done it for the last four years. Mm -hmm. It's the only night a year where I actually dress up and drag myself <gasps> and I go out and just live my best life. Oh my God, amazing. And it's just, the best time. Yeah. My, Halloween all the way. And my feet hurt for the next three weeks. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's worth it. But it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, red or white wine? White. Mm hmm And cocktails or beer? Oh, cocktails. And do you have a favourite other than espresso martini? Or a or... dirty martini. Yeah. But like really dirty. I'm talking okay. minimum four olives. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. Yeah. Nice. Extra salty. Extra salty. <laughs> like. Um, so what have you got coming up? in the next couple of months and where can people find you on social media? So at Jones Production underscore B&E mm -hmm. and next couple of months I have the launch of Diamond Drag Brunch which I'm very excited for on the 9th of June mm -hmm. and then I'm doing the Queen's Ball after party mm -hmm. at Sporties mm -hmm. Diamonds in the Bunker do you see the oh. diamond theme here? <laughs> um, I'm very excited I'm doing burlesque in the Bunker Bar and drag very excited for that and then I'm off to Wynnum doing another Diamond Brunch. Mm -hmm. 
And then between those, I'm doing my drag story time, which anyone has children, it's a great event. Mm -hmm. And I have my seventh queer in here, which I'm very excited for, for the children. And then the rest of the year, I've got surprises. Awesome. We'll have everything linked down below so people can find you and find your events and everything. But um, thank you so much for being here. It was lovely to have you. Um, and we definitely need to talk more about Buffy. Oh, it's an iconic show. Yeah. Like, still to this day. Yeah. Slaps, baby, slaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any anything else you want to add? No. And I just want to thank you for your time and obviously okay. giving this Obviously, like, like I feel like I give a platform for performers. Mm -hmm. And I think you do the same thing here, mm -hmm. giving the opportunity Trying. for performers. Well, yeah. it's happening, babe. Yeah. You have a whole Instagram and everything. I know. People are enjoying it. I'm like, crazy. <laughs> and you're giving a platform for people to share their stories, to promote upcoming shows. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're doing what producers do yeah. in, in a unique, exciting way. And I can't wait to see, what it, see where it goes. Thanks. Thanks so much. That was so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much to our guest for being on the podcast and letting us take a peek behind the curtain of their lives. Thanks for everyone joining us and we will see you in our next episode.